to amend the bill to the House. I call Hare Te Hipang. Tēnā koe, ngā mihi ki a koutou uh, i tēnā i roto i te whare, i te atanei, and my acknowledgement to all members in the House this afternoon. As I stand to speak in the um, position of as last speaker for the National Party, and in so doing, may I just first acknowledge all those who have worked conscientiously on this bill, uh, the members of the Select Committee. I haven't had the uh, opportunity nor the advantage of sitting in on the Select Committee during the discussions that have occurred as a result. However, I have um, conscientiously read the bill, although not with a, uh, a, a thorough scrutinised legal lens, and I have glanced over the debates that have been recorded in Hansard. I've also listened intently to the discussions and the debate in the House this afternoon. And, Mr Speaker, may I um, first and foremost say that National supports this bill. My colleagues have addressed the detail around what their concerns are and the suggestions or the proposals for amendments to this bill. And although they have not been heeded, it is noted on the record. In the committee stage of this debate, uh, as we are now in the third reading, there was considerable discussion around those concerns, and I will come back to that. However, from what was canvassed or discussed in opening debate this afternoon, Minister Jones uh, mentioned to the previous speaker in the chair that he doesn't always hear accurately the female voice. And although that may have been said in jest, he unconsciously also said in the next breath, making reference to that this bill is about civil service leaders who are handsomely remunerated. So as a female woman MP in the House, I just detected the unconscious bias that sometimes pervades the corridor that comes through. And as a member of the fairer sex, this bill is about ensuring that there is a level of parity. So I just thought I'd mention that, some of those subconscious biases that may be there. And some of that subconscious bias may also prevail in this legislation. Uh, my colleague across the House, uh, Paul Eagle, made reference to that this government is about sending the signal of integrity and accountability full transparency and accountability. I invite the government to do more than signal. I invite the government to exemplify this. This is a bill that is attempting to exemplify, uh, ensuring that there is greater integrity and accountability in the management of state services by providing a strengthened and more consistent regulation of conduct and remuneration of employees at the most senior level. So I just gave those two examples where we have members of the government who subconsciously are expressing messages that are not consistent with what the broad policy statement of this bill is about, integrity and accountability. Mr Speaker, let me now turn to the details and the provisions of this bill. As all previous speakers in the House before me have given an overview, the overview that I uh, share with the House is that this bill is an omnibus bill. And at the committee stage, before the Select Committee and also in the House, amendments had been proposed and they have been factored into this. So part one of the bill seeks to make amendments to the Crown Entities Act in relation to the appointment of chief executives for statutory crown entities. So the select committee is requiring that the boards of statutory crown entities obtain the commissioner's written consent to the terms and conditions of employment. The committee at committee stage recommended an insertion into the clause four under this bill, requiring the commissioner to not only obtain the Commissioner's written consent, but requiring that the Commissioner have regard to 
the legal, commercial and operational context of that entity, any information that's been provided by the board of that entity, such as advice about the candidate's knowledge, skills and experience, the public nature of that entity and its role, and importantly, the related public interest in prudent stewardship of public resources. Also for the Commissioner to have regard to relevant market information, government expectations and other relevant factors. Mr Speaker, I'll come back to the concern that was expressed by my senior colleague, the Honourable David Carter, when this House was at committee stage yesterday. And that was in relation to a concern about the neutrality of appointments of a chief executive to such a state entity. My colleague uh, referenced his concern around clause four, which is seeking an amendment to section 117 relating to the employment of the chief executive. And that the Commissioner, in having regard to government expectations, questions political neutrality in that appointment. My colleagues' concerns have been detailed on the record around that. And notably, that concern in having been noted was one of the reasons why this uh, party was somewhat hesitant about that amendment not being factored in. Another amendment that the Select Committee had requested be taken into consideration is around part two relating to improving the Commissioner's investigatory powers and setting provisions to apply codes of conduct. The committee recommended that the bill would be improved by including additional sections of the Inquiries Act. And that is outlined within the Act without me having to go into the detail around that. However, by inclusion of that, the Select Committee's recommendations have been factored in and taken into account and the amendments accordingly to be made. Mr Speaker, as indicated to the House, not having sat on the Select Committee, I can speak from experience as a board member when there has been one of those members turned somewhat rogue in relation to the conduct and that the board has been at a loss in terms of holding to account around the integrity of the board and what is required in terms of the duty there, the conduct. So this bill sets out very clearly what the terms of that will be. So Mr Speaker, in taking this call, the National Party supports this bill with reservations, as had been noted at the committee stage of the hearing yesterday, has been recorded in Hansard, and importantly, should there be any concerns around the application and the um, interpretation of this Act, the National Party's integrity will stand without question and without reservation, having that noted on the record. Accordingly, Mr Speaker, the National Party commends this bill to the House and as a member of that party, I support that decision. I call Ginny Anderson.